with its centuries of history and array of colourful characters, it's not surprising that the USA is home to many haunted places. In this video, we count down 5 mysterious and haunted places in the USA. When most people think of San Diego, they picture beaches, beautiful weather and cultural attractions. But for those who have an affinity for the paranormal San Diego Beacons investigation, with its rich and dark past, haunted spots, spiritual encounters and inexplicable events. The most haunted of all the San Diego places is the Whaley House. While the story of the Whaley House's origins may seem as simple and innocent as a family's history, the truth is many believe this house was destined to be haunted before it is even built. The property was the site of one of the town's most famous public executions, that of the hanging of the infamous thief Yankee Jim Robinson. But Thomas Whaley was not daunted by this fact, and in 1855 purchased the land and began construction of what would be his family home. The house was a beautiful example of Greek Revival architecture. Thomas, his wife Anna and their three children moved into the house in 1857, and within a few months opened a general store inside the residence. It wasn't long after the Whaley family moved into the home that sadness and despair were thrust upon them. First, their young son Thomas, who was only 18 months old, died of scarlet fever inside the house. Then a few months later, a fire raged within the home, destroying the general store. Soon after, Thomas decided to move the family to San Francisco. Several years later, in 1868, the Whaley family, which now included Thomas, his wife and their five children, returned to the home. Once the family returned, the Whaley house was again bustling with activity. It became the headquarters for the city courthouse a general store and more. But in 1870, local merchants began to move to the newly established new town, abandoning Old Town and leaving it eerily quiet. Thomas Whaley was not ready to give up and continue to live in his home. In 1871, when Thomas was away on a business trip, a group of armed men held Anna Whaley at gunpoint as they seized the courthouse records from the house. This, many say, was the turning point for the family and the house. Over the years, many descendants of the Whaley family lived and died in the house, including Thomas, Anna and their children Lillian, Thomas, Violet and Francis. During its restoration periods which took place over several different times throughout the home's history, workers and visitors began to notice strange and mysterious sounds and encounters. The first and most well-known ghost that lingered within the house and on the grounds was that of Yankee Jim Robinson, as he had died right on the spot where the home was built. The infamous criminal made eerie noises, loud footsteps and left disembodied footprints, continually scaring Whaley family members throughout their lifetimes. An island icon, Captain Tony's saloon has an intriguing past, one that includes murder, mystery and even a bit of mayhem. Before becoming a popular watering hole, the building served as a few different roles, it was an ice house, the city morgue, a wireless telegraph station and a cigar factory. It was also the original home of the famous Sloppy Joe's Bar. It was 1865 when a hurricane hit the Florida Keys and water came crashing through the city, smashing nearly everything in its wake. The city morgue that would later become Captain Tony's was no exception to the devastation. The many corpses that were awaiting burial or autopsy were washed away except for one. History tells us that the one body recovered was lying in front of the building, and was later buried beneath the building surrounded by holy water and enclosed by a wall where the pool room now resides. During the building's construction, while removing old flooring workers discovered the skeletal remains of several people, and a grave marker of a woman named Elvira. It's believed that these may very well be some of the missing bodies that were lost after the hurricane. Many who visited this legendary bar have experienced some sort of inexplicable encounter, Often the events surround the ladies' restroom where people have reported various mysterious encounters. One woman reported that she tried to go into the first store but it was locked. When she went into the second store, she noticed no one was in the first. Before leaving the bar later that evening, she went in only to find the store still locked, and before she knew what was happening, the outside door to the restroom opened and closed, although no one could be seen. When she went into the back store, she heard the door of the first store unlock and slam. Frightened, she jumped up to see what was happening and still no one was in sight, and the first door was again locked. The bar's owner, who considers himself to be a skeptic, reports that he too had several experiences that were not just spooky but terrifying. 
One night around 4am, Joe heard a voice calling out to him. He got up from his desk to investigate but saw no one was there. He walked to the back of the bar and noticed the doors were wide open, even though he locked them hours before. Unable to explain the voice he heard, he simply brushed it off, until a few years later when the same voice called out to him again. This time the voice said, don't leave. Joe ran to check the back doors and this time they were locked. He found nothing out of the ordinary throughout the bar so he went home. Hours later around 6am, Joe got a call from the police saying they found the body of a young teenage girl in front of the bar. It seems she tried to call her mother just before she passed away. Her mother called the police and they later found her body in front of Captain Tony's. Joe believes the voice was telling him to stay, and that he might have been able to save the girl's life. Only that spirit knows for sure. Many people who've been to Hummel Park in Nebraska disagree on the specifics of the park's history, but one thing that most people can agree on is that there's a creepy vibe there. A place called Devil's Den is where some people have come to perform rituals. Although the tales of the park being built on a Native American burial ground, and infested with evil spirits have yet to be proven, the altars with satanic scrawlings are very real and can be seen by visitors. Legend has it that if you count the steps going up and down the numbers will never match up, there will always be more stairs going up than coming down, or vice versa depending on who you ask. It's said that if you ever do arrive at the same number, your death is imminent. One legend even says that if you count the steps while descending, and happen to count the correct numbers the devil will appear to grant you anything you ask for, as long as you're willing to give your soul in exchange. Listed on the National Register of Historic Places, the old jail was built by Henry Flagger in 1891 and served the county until 1953. During this era it wasn't uncommon for the warden and his family to live inside the jail, adjacent to the prisoners. So Sheriff Joe Perry and his family were also residents within the building. They would live alongside around 60 prisoners. Visitors to the old jail have a chance to walk through the men and women's cells, see actual weapons that were used in crimes and tour through the execution gallows. The experience is often a frightening one, especially for those who are easily caught off guard by unexpected events. Many have died and suffered with diseases within these walls, and it's believed their spirits are still lingering. The 6 foot 8 300 pound sheriff has been seen and heard. Strange smells, heavy footprints, disembodied moanings, laughing, jangling chains and even the sounds of dogs barking have all been reported. The old jail is so abundant with supernatural activity that it's been investigated by various paranormal professionals, and because of their findings is deemed a certified haunted building, and is listed in the National Directory of Haunted Places. The most famous ghost of the harbour is the Lady in Black at Fort Warren, seven miles out to sea on George's Island. Legend has it that in 1862, Mrs. Lainey came to Fort from South Carolina to rescue her husband, a Confederate soldier who was being held prisoner there. She snuck and lied her way into the prison and managed to rescue her husband and others in prison there. Unfortunately for Miss Lanier, they were apprehended. She fired at the nearest guard but the weapon backfired. A piece of shrapnel from the explosion lodged itself into her husband's head, and therefore she had accidentally killed her own husband in an effort to rescue him. She was then tried and hung in a black robe as a traitor on George's Island on February 2nd, 1862. It's in this black robe that she is still seen to this day in various ways around Fort Warren and George's Island as a whole. Boston Harbour's Long Island is home to one of the most tragic Boston ghost stories. At the close of the American Revolution, the British still had several ships lagging in Boston Harbour. On board of one of these ships were William and Mary Burton. The newlyweds like so many others were fleeing the chaos of this besieged city and looking forward to spending their lives together across the Atlantic. As their ship attempted to sail out of Boston Harbour, a cannonball from the Long Island Battery hit Mary in the back of the head. Unbelievably she was not killed instantly, but lingered on for several days in excruciating pain before succumbing to a massive head trauma. As she laid there, Mary pleaded with her husband not to bury her at sea. She was never fond of the sea and could not bear to have her earthly remains consigned to a watery grave. Eventually, Mary died of her injuries and William was permitted to venture to Long Island to bury his love. 
Once ashore, he sewed her body into a soft red blanket that Mary had brought for the long journey home. He then laid her to rest in the sandy dunes. He fashioned a headstone out of a piece of driftwood, and he carved her name into it and swore that he would return to Boston and give her a proper marker. He never returned. So that was 5 Haunted Places in the USA. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more countdown videos.